Hello, welcome to this introduction to the agent plugin for Grasshopper. Um, let's just get right into it. So, um, an agent system is going to run with this en engine component, which takes in a list of systems. So, let's drag out a system component. So, a system um, contains agents, emitters, and environment, forces, and behaviors. And I'll go into the specifics of these um, later. So let's hook up the system component and drag out an agent settings component. So an agent has a lifespan, a mass, body size, maximum speed, maximum force, vision angle, vision radius, and a length and a history length. So let's hook up the agent settings to there. Um, and the other thing we're going to need is a emitter. So here I just dragged out a point emitter and hooked it up. So you can see now the engine will run. We're actually going to need a deconstruct agent component in order to get to its field such as position, velocity, acceleration, and lifespan. Um, and the other thing it needs is a boolean switch. Um, this is a reset switch that starts and resets the simulation, as well as a timer component, um, which is going to tell this um, component to run every 20 milliseconds. So let's set this to true, meaning reset. Um, hook up this. And you'll see once we hit this uh, reset false, you'll see that we have some agents being emitted. So right now they're just being emitted at random um, and with a random initial velocity um, with a lifespan of 30 time steps. Um, so let's make this a little more interesting by adding some forces. So this is a cohesion force. This is going to cause them to go at maximum speed to um, their neighbors. So here you can see now they're all coagulating together. We're going to want to limit this with a separation force. And each force comes with a weight multiplier um, and a vision multiplier. So the separation force has a vision multiplier of one third. So uh, it'll be one third of the distance to anything that it's cohesion to, um, it'll separate from. So meaning um, anything that's too close, it'll avoid. So let's you shift to hook up this into the forces so now you can see they're staying generally together but also avoiding each other um, so they don't crash in. Uh, the last force is an alignment force um, and this will cause them to all travel in generally the same direction. Uh, this is a little strong for my liking so I'm going to limit it with a weight multiplier and so that's kind of the initial step what we can do is we can add an environment um, so that these guys live within. You can see if I raise their lifespan um, very high, you'll see that um, they just kind of roam around uh, wherever they want. But let's limit their movements within environment. So the most simple one is this world box environment. Um, it's going to take in a box. Set it to some reasonable values, plug it in, and we have an environment that we can hook up to our system. So now you'll see the agents are being limited to uh, this box environment. However, you'll see when they get to the edges, they kind of stick to the edges. Um, so we might want to add in a contained force, and a contained force is going to take in our environment, and it's going to tell the agents to avoid the edges. So right now, the vision radius for these guys is too high, so let's limit it. Um, say let's take uh, one-fifth. So if their vision is five, now they'll only avoid when the edges are uh, one unit away. So now you can see instead of sticking to the edges, they are avoiding them, but still following their other behaviors like contain and separate. Um, so you can see here they're being emitted from this point because the default value for the point emitter is the zero zero point, but we can define our own point here um, just by setting one reference to the final point. And now you'll see they'll actually be emitted from this point. And we can move it up in space. So now it's being emitted from the center of the box. Um, so that was the box environment. Now let's take a look at the surface environment. I can 
jack out a service environment component. I have some lines here set up. We can loft them. And we can set our surface. We can plug it in here. We could actually hide this. I'm going to do a little cleaning up here. So we're not seeing everything. So this is service environment's not hooked up right now, so they're still following the box. Um, but if we plug in, um, let's remove this contained behavior so you can see what will happen. Plug in the surface environment component, you'll see that now they're being um, restricted to the surface. But again, we have the problem of the edges being too strong. So let's add in our contain, make sure we set the environment to be the surface. And if we do the same contain force, um, they should contain themselves um, in the edges. We'll bring down the vision multiplier. So this is a service environment. You could do um, things like uh, rainfall simulation um, using surfaces, um, as well as a variety of other things, whatever you can think of. Um, and the last environment that we're going to check out is the BREP environment. So for the BREP environment, I have this curve here that I'm going to extrude. I'm going to set this BREP. I'm going to hide it in this space so I don't get confused. And let's see what happens when we plug in. Let's make sure we uh, disconnect the contain force and let's just see what happens when we plug in the uh, BREP environment. So you can see now they're restricted to this um, BREP. Um, but if you can notice it's going a little bit slower, that's because the computation involved in, in ensuring that they're contained this BREP is an expensive one. So I'm going to show you how you can get around that using behaviors. So this is a bounce contained behavior. It'll cause the agents to bounce off of the boundaries of their environment. So if we give it the environment um, and we can um, hook up this behavior here. Um, and then the distinction between forces and behaviors is that forces will only return a vector to add to the agent's velocity, whereas the behaviors will uh, be able to directly manipulate the uh, agent's position. So now we have this bounce contain behavior, so you'll see they actually start bouncing off the edges, and because of this we can actually remove um, the environment from the system uh, because the bounce behavior should take care of restricting their movements and the computation runs a little bit faster. So let's see if we can do something a little more interesting. Um, I'm going to reset the simulation and pause it. And let's see if we can record their positions over time. We're going to graph this list and we're going to run an interpolation curve between the points. So it's going to record their positions over time and draw a line through their positions. Um, so, let it go. So now it'll record their positions over time. Maybe we want to decrease the weight of the cohesion force so that they Now you can see they're starting to explore their environment and the edges of their environment. We can pause this and take a look at their paths. And of course we can bake these out um, and they are rhino geometry that you can, if you can feed it back into the system or you could use this as your output. Um, if squiggly lines don't interest you, um, you can attach other things to the agent's positions. So let's reset the simulation again. We can clear this. I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of all this. Um, I want to be able to see my agents better. So I'm going to deconstruct this BREP, which is actually this, and only look at the 
edges of it. And now we can only see the kind of outline of it. Um, and what you could do is you can add a sphere. So now you're saying, you know, at each agent position, you're going to put a sphere. And I'm going to have the radius be uh, based on the lifespan. So we're going to need to remap it because we saw the lifespan is 1,000, which is ridiculous. Um, I'm actually going to move this down to about, we'll bring it down to 150 again. And we can use this as our source domain, the life's current lifespan as the value, and the target domain. I'm going to want these circles or these spheres to uh, grow. So we're going to set the start of the domain at 1 and the end of the domain at 0 and remap these values and hook that up to our sphere component. Now, if we let these guys go, we should see um, little spheres start appearing where the agent positions are. And they're being bounded by the environment and they're growing and eventually they will do the equivalent of popping um, but of course you can freeze the simulation at any point take a look at where they are um, and then of course you can bake them out uh, if that pleases you and uh, now you have your spheres out there and you can use them in your Rhino model or whatever you need to. So that's it. That's uh, just a quick look at uh, some of the possibilities. Um, in the future, um, I'm going to add some path following, um, obstacle avoidance, as well as interactions between systems.